Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it looks something like this. Hello and welcome to this video, the first part of our short series of four. The full 45 minute version is already available on my Patreon, but in the next few weeks these parts release here as well in smaller snack sizes. Let's take a look at what this is all about. So here is the deal. The player walks around in his tiny perfect world and then he thinks, hey you know what I really need, I need a chest right about here then the thing materializes out of thin air and then you can press a button and the thing opens and then it closes again and then it opens and closes you know like magic there's a reason why this video came to life and that is me fulfilling a kid's dream of mine, of becoming a game developer for my own game. To be realistic, it will probably never leave the stage of being a prototype, but one hell of a prototype it's going to be. The idea of the game in general is to maximize synergy effects with Houdini, get as much as possible out of it. This is going to drive myself to learn even more and also generates a lot of topics that I can show you. One hard lesson I just needed to learn, projects in Unreal can easily break and version control is recommended. Long story short, I needed to rebuild what I had so far, but focused on the buildable crate first. And I brought it back to the point where I can show you this specific process. The pipeline to bring this crate fully textured through substance into Unreal as a gameplay relevant object. This is going to be a bit experimental. The clue behind this is that there are many elements that are already a bit complex and would need their own hour of content to cover them. Like how to model a crate in Houdini, how to build hologram shaders in Unreal. I won't cover those in this video, but focus on the relevant parts to bring it all together. Make the jumps between the softwares. While doing that, I'm going to reference and link to all the tutorials and courses that teach me what I needed to create the final outcome. Most of them are free YouTube tutorials, with the exception of the Unreal C++ Interaction System, which is part of a 25 bucks Patreon course from Ruben Ward, which I can fully recommend, and some overall C++ knowledge that I gathered by watching several Udemy courses. But now, let's begin this journey covering the space between three softwares, Houdini, Substance and Unreal. We start with the crate itself, modeled in Houdini. What you see here is the result of a free series made by Simon from SideFX, at least the basic modeling section of it. Here we already have the lower and top part as separated node streams. Basically all the nodes within the blue area belongs to that. Now the work begins. I want to bring this over to Substance to create some textures for it. Then I need to bring that over to Unreal and finally create some animations to open and close the crate. My first problem is that Unreal doesn't like quads that much. When you try to import the geometry of the lower section of the crate, it will give you a message like can't triangulate mesh. To help Unreal with that, you can triangulate this by yourself within Houdini. All you need to do is place a divide sop. The default settings already do the trick. They are set to convex polygons. Then after doing all the modeling, I placed a group delete node. Doing procedural modeling in Houdini does create a lot of them to enable further procedural work. But we don't need them from here on out, so I get rid of them. Then I do the following for each section at this point. I create a fresh group to have access to the whole geometry of this section in particular. And then I provide an attribute called index. Each part will have its own index. This is going to be utilized for the UVs, but more on that later. As a part of the animation, I wanted to have a platform that lifts after opening the crate. I think I saw that first in Borderlands. When you opened a loot box there, it opens, the platform comes up to display the content of the box, the weapons, for example, just to give you a general idea that I have in mind for this. 
The platform is easily created. The lower section itself uses a poly extrude to create the inner space. In the poly extrude, you can generate groups for the individual parts of the process. So here I want to save the front into a group. By default, that's called the extrude front. Then down here as a next step, I blast away what is not in that group and I'm left with the one primitive. That primitive can then be extruded to create a simple mesh, giving it a bit of thickness. Here I also use group delete and as you can see, there are quite a few. We just used extrude front and there are four more due to the different poly nodes. Now I can make a new group and again provide that index attribute that comes into play a bit later. Now we are at the top. In Simon's tutorial, it's one piece. We could just use that for the animation, use the white side as a hinge for example. But I wanted the top to split and slide to the sides. Let me show you the result once again. But that means we need to separate the geometry. Fairly easy to do. Just place a clip node, but keep all the primitives. Again, we get some groups to continue the procedural queue. Here we pick up the below plane group in the split node to create two separate node streams, one for each side of the top. The first step is to close the hole the clip created. Here I just fill in with a single polygon using the node polyfill. We repeat the group delete, create a new group and provide the index attribute. We end up with the result, the model crate. Remember, this could be anything you want to put through this pipeline. It could be a crate, a device, a weapon, whatever you want. But whatever comes out of this to make the jump to substance, we need UVs. I started a new node stream using an object merge loading the result of the model crate. First I make sure that we have normals and then I delete potentially existing UV data with an attribute delete node. And this section might be a bit more specific to the crate or rather hard surface designs because I can easily use one single node to create UVs on each of the pieces using one UV unwrap. What I do here is create UVs for one geometry group one at a time. This would also work with just the one UV unwrap, but by doing it one group at a time, I get a distribution to cover the whole tile. We can take a quick look at the UVs with the UV quick shade. We can't really see the platform within, but we can see how the UVs are applied to the rest of the outer geometry. Now we come to the index attribute that I set up earlier. For the grade and potentially for a big chunk of future assets for my game, I'm going to use a UDIM workflow. What does that mean? Almost all of your assets will have parts that should have different textures. Some parts are plastic, others are metal. One way of doing it would be to separate the mesh into multiple material groups. In Houdini, you would create a material sop on each group or write the shop material path attribute into a wrangle. That is a totally valid approach, but this would also lead to multiple texture sets in substance. Usually you would want that. Then you could throw smart materials on each of them and be done with that. But then you also need to create multiple materials in Unreal and it just multiplies the steps you need to take. I want to have several material effects like preview hologram and the materialize or dissolve effect. If you have multiple texture sets, you need at least one material instance for each of them. Sounds like a lot of chaos, especially if I need to do that all by myself. So instead of creating one material for each group, I want to create one single material but containing the different groups and be able to display different kinds of materials all over the mesh. And that is where the UDIM workflow comes into play. The standard UDIM tile starts at 1001 and I provided each group with an index starting from zero. So this one line assigns each group its own tile. Let's look at the UVs in the viewport and how the nodes manipulate them. The lower part now displays the UV view and we can see how each unwrap creates a new set for each group and layers them on top of each other. 
For better visibility, I created color nodes that make it more clear which set belong together. Looking at the vertex colors is also one possible way for Substance to distinguish between texture sets, but we don't really need them in this UDIM workflow. So each group has its own tile specified in an attribute called UDIM. Then we can use the UV layout to distribute them along the tiles. It does that by this setting, the override of the target assignment. Here we specify the UDIM attribute as the one defining the target. Other important settings on this node are scale islands to match their surface to get an even distribution. The scale should be fixed. And most important, the targets need to be switched from rectangles to UDIM tiles. You could decide to stack identical islands, but that will layer the left and right side well on top of each other. And I don't want that in this case. What you might have already noticed, the green UV set does not fit on the tile, given the unified sizes. That's the lower section of the crate. Here we can utilize once again the procedural groups Houdini gives us. Everything that did not fit on a tile can be gathered in a group by default called non-packed. This is specific to this geometry, but often you end up with one tile being bigger than the rest. I already see the need for a fully procedural UDIM distribution asset, but for now let's keep it simple and just put this non-packed group on the next free tile. If we take a look at the UVs with a quick trade, the unwraps seem to have done a good job. More complex geometry needs more refined steps, but that's a topic for another video. We are almost ready to bring this crate over to Substance Painter. But in case that I want to use this geometry as reference in Unreal, I need to make sure that I make an adjustment for the scale. Houdini and Unreal are not really on the same side what one unit should be. For Houdini, one unit is one meter, while Unreal thinks in centimeters. You need to scale up by 100 to counter that. I'm using FBX as the file format and Houdini offers an FBX output node for that. Of course, I tested this before, but to make a fresh example, I renamed the file to new and save to disk. Finally, we can make the first software jump, going over to Substance Painter. Here we have the software open fresh without a project. So let's create a new one. There's already a template for Unreal, which